Welcome back to the Getting Started with Clues series. This video is part one of two videos on creating and editing source documents and clues. Documents are the heart of clues. They are anything from which we can obtain information about the people we are researching. Source documents could be census forms, immigration records, estate files, pictures, whatever. For each person named in the document, or at least the ones of interest to us, we establish links between the document and a person's record. Associated with each link are the details contained in the document for that person. In clues, information describing the document, such as title, author, identifying numbers, and the like, is saved in a source record. The content of the documents, along with specific page and line references, is saved in the document and document details records. Each source and clues can be associated with more than one document, depending on how the document was defined, and each document can be linked to one or more persons. There are often multiple ways to define the structure such as whether a source should be an entire census or a subset of the census, such as a state or county, or whatever portion of the census was on a reproduced film. The decision is left to you. Personally, I follow a practice of establishing one document in my clues database for each census enumeration district and one source record for the entire census if I used an online database. If I had used a microfilm to view the census, then that microfilm would be the source. I find this best fits the way clues works and avoids duplication of data entry. When making your own decisions on this, keep in mind how the clues source and document records are structured. Since source information is a critical component of good genealogical research, let's go ahead and look at how source records are created and edited. Clicking on the Source button in the Explorer bar brings up a list of all the sources within the database on the main grid. In clues, sources are organized into eight categories, listed here below the Source button. Clicking on one of these types brings up a blank form for you to use to fill in the source data. Pick the type that best matches your document type. I'm going to close this and as an example, let's look at a source that's already been created for the census document we saw earlier. This source describes the entire 1930 U.S. database on Ancestry.com. I can associate it to any document I create based on data taken from this census using Ancestry.com. If I used a different provider for getting the census data, a separate source would be needed. The top half of the window has two tab pages containing all the source information. If you own a physical copy of the source, its location in your library can be recorded here. We'll see where to put digital images or files in a few minutes. You can formulate your own name for the source as it might appear in various clues lists of sources. This could be different from the source title, which should match the item's title exactly as you saw it. There's an option in the Options window under the Edit menu which controls whether the source name or the source title is used. I'll jump out of this source quickly to show you that option. We click on Options and then click on the Sources. Here are the two, the two options. If I wanted to change the setting to my custom name, I would select source label but for now I'm just going to leave it as is.
You can select the repository where you actually view the document from the drop-down list by clicking on the down arrow. To create a new repository, you click on the New Repository button. To edit the selected repository, right-click on this field and select Edit Repository. If we wanted to leave the repository blank after previously making a selection, right-click and select Clear Selection. I'm going to reselect what I had. The second page includes fields to enter identifying numbers and publisher details. Note the credit line where you can include information about the source of your source if the source you're using has republished data from another source. The bottom part of the window contains three tabbed pages. The Quick Capture page is an area into which you can drop selected text from a drag and drop operation or paste from the clipboard. Windows 7 and higher may not allow dragging text from a web page depending on your security configuration. I'm going to demonstrate using the clipboard. If I go to the web page and right click, copy, Go back to the Quick Capture, right-click again, Paste. This is a quick way to gather some of your source information, hence the name Quick Capture. The Digital Files page allows you to attach internet addresses or URLs to the source as well as digital files. You can also attach URLs and files to documents. So I will demonstrate file attachments later in part two when we talk about documents. There is one tip I'll give you here, and that is if you select the main search page, in our case for the 1930 U.S. federal census, on your online provider site, you can just drag the URL into this area by clicking on the little icon at the beginning of the address field, holding it down and dragging down to the digital files area and then letting up on the mouse button to drop the address. So if we want to return to the website to do another search, the 1930 U.S. Census, we just click on the View button and it will call back that search page. Finally, the third page is for evaluation comments and remarks. Here you can give comments about the condition of the source you were working with or any other comments about it you need to note. Be careful with the Delete Source button as it will erase all information contained in this whole source. You can print a report listing the information in the source by pressing the Print Report button. Whenever you change information in this source, click OK to save the data and exit the form. As you saw before, to call up a source for editing, double-click on the source in the main menu or right-click and say Edit Item. 
And that pretty much covers the entry of sources. In part two, we will continue by entering some document data coming from this source. Be sure to view the other videos that explore the various features of clues. Thanks for watching.